The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. And I laid it all out right there and I said, take my language, take the drugs, take the alcohol, the sex, the things, take it all. I'm done with it. So yeah, I, I, I'm sitting with you guys uh, 10 days shy of four years clean and sober and celibate because of Jesus Christ and what he's done for me. I didn't find God. No, I didn't find God. He found me. Welcome to Life Today. I'm Randy Robinson. This is Tammy Trent. And you know, you listen to Christian radio a little bit. I mean, you're on, you've been on Christian radio, yes. but you listen to, have you heard that song, uh, Who I Am by Ben Fuller? Can I be honest? Yeah. I, I didn't put like Ben's name with that song. Okay. I've heard it, but I, I've never met Ben. Yeah. I didn't know much about him at sure. all until we started sort of researching this show. Like I was at home looking at a bunch of YouTubes and listening to his music yeah. and I thought, what I love so much about this guy is that he's come to faith later in life. Yeah. Like I was raised in a Christian church. That's great. In a Christian church. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Those non-Christian churches we don't recommend. But, <laughs> yes. yeah. but I was raised in the church and so my faith, I mean, I've, I've, I've had it my whole life. Right. But I find it so inspiring when you meet somebody that's come to faith later in yeah, life. Yeah. And like their relationship with Jesus is just so different. Like it's contagious and fresh and new. And I mean, that's who Ben is to me when you yeah, start talking and you, to Yeah, you get to see the, the contrast, I think, of a life without Christ and a life with one. And that's yes. what we love to showcase here is, is the power of Christ in our lives. Mm -hmm. So with that, Ben Fuller. Great to have you. Praise God. <laughs> see, there you go, right there. Yeah. Thanks, so guys. We kind of yeah. touched on this a little bit, mm -hmm. but Tell us your story in your own words. Um, well, I was uh, born and raised, born in New Hampshire, raised in Vermont. Right. And um, so I was raised on a dairy farm, only son. And my dad really leaned on me heavy for uh, a lot of work. And his dad kind of taught him and his dad taught him. And anyway, so they passed down this thing that men are tough and men are strong and we can't show emotion. I really just wanted to hear I love you, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and that was just something that we just didn't really I feel like he wanted to say it, but he just, he didn't know how. And so I don't blame him for that because that's just what he knew. 16 years old, I came really close to um, pulling the trigger. Um, I thought that uh, nobody loved me. I, I had it all out uh, together on the outside, but on the inside, I just was, you know, I was captain of the football team. I was, I was all these things and bubbly and friendly. And then, but on the inside, I was just, I would go home and I was just uh, empty. 18 years old, I believe God spared me. Now that I look back, I, I know that God knocked the gun from my hands. Mm -hmm. um, 18 years old, I got introduced to cocaine and alcohol um, and sex and all the things to try to fill all the voids mm -hmm. for 14 and a half years. Mm -hmm. and I lost my best friend, Ryan, in 2017 to heroin overdose. And um, it really shook me. And, it, and I needed to start I didn't know how to get it out, my feelings, my emotions and stuff. So I started writing. That's really when I started writing. Um, and uh, I had picked up guitar in college and country music was always my thing. So I started writing and using my guitar as this outlet um, for my music. And so soon after, uh, I had played a lot of bars and restaurants in Vermont. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, people were like, you got to go to Nashville, Tennessee. You, you've got to go to the Music City. You could make it. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know, make what? I was working on a landscape <laughs> crew, stonemason. I, was, I had a, a great job. I had a house. But again, I had this feeling inside that was like, is this it? Mm -hmm. Like, why was I so empty still, mm -hmm. right? So 2018 in the fall, I... I finally had heard enough. I almost went in spite of everybody. Like I'd finally heard enough. Hey, Ben, go to Nashville. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going. So I, I put my house up for sale. So I packed, packed up what I could fit in my truck and I drove to Tennessee. My house sold in one day and the woman who bought it was from Nashville. <laughs> and so like, I didn't realize all these God winks that were starting. And um, so I went, I got a job at Tootsie's. Yeah. Started playing Tootsie's famous Orchid Lounge, right? Yeah. And uh, they hired me on the spot. I would play there for the next year. But nobody saw the drinks that I was having behind the scenes. And um, I lived in Cool Springs, 
26 minutes, I would uh, leave Tootsie's and I, I was pretty drunk mm -hmm. and uh, most, most days. Mm -hmm. So a whole year of that went by and all of a sudden, and I'm asking myself the whole time, is this it? Like, is this my life now? Still in is, this, is this what I'm doing? Is this, have I made it? Yeah. And, and mind you, I'd sent a photo of me in front of Tootsie's to my dad. And I remember he said, I'm, I'm so proud of you. Wow. It was like one of the first times I remember my dad being like, I'm so proud of you. You made it, son. Oh. Like you made it. But I didn't feel like I made it. <laughs> it's like on the outside again, it looked good, right? But on the inside, no one knew mm -hmm. my struggle. But God did. And he had other plans for my life. And so in 2019, in the fall of September, I got a phone call. I was driving home. I got a phone call. I'll, I'll remember it forever. It was from the Davenport family. And they were from Vermont. And God had moved them to Nashville a year and a half before I got there. And they called me and they said, Ben, do you want to come over for a meal? And I said, duh, I don't turn down food. You know, so I was just like, you know what? I'm going to go over for a home cooked meal. This is amazing. And, and they're Vermonters, right? Like we're few and far between. So I went and we had this amazing meal and I had no idea how biblical this was. At the end of the meal, they asked me, will you come to church with us tomorrow morning? It was a Saturday night. Sunday morning shows up. I'm like potatoes. I'm like, can you pass the rolls? You know, and I'm like eating the roll. And 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 I said, sure, I'll go with you. Yeah. What what else you got to? Is that cake? Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm like, sure, I'll go. But I was raised with, with respect. Mm. And if somebody did something nice for you, you do something nice back. Mm -hmm. They fed me. I'll feed them. And so 9:30 in the morning, I showed up at their house, and we drove to the service um, at Church of the City in Franklin, Tennessee. Yeah. And um, and I'll never forget. Um, it was the music and it was the music that, that drew me in. And, um, I remember looking back, I, I'm getting emotional, but I, I look back at the family and I'm like, I gotta go. I hear it. I could hear the, the booming. I could hear the bass. I had no idea what it was. And I ran into the auditorium and I stood there and I could hear and feel, and I saw everybody's hands were up in the air. And I was like, what is this? Like, what is going on? What is going on? And I felt, I felt the Lord and he said, I gave you your voice and now you're gonna sing for me. And I laid it all out right there. And I said, take my language, take the drugs, take the alcohol, the sex, the things, take it all. I'm done with it. Two months, within two months, uh, I was drinking like 19 beers a night, went down to 10 to eight to six to two. I don't even like the taste anymore. He pulled all these things for me. So yeah, I, I, I'm sitting with you guys uh, 10 days shy of four years clean and sober and celibate because of Jesus Christ and what he's done for me. So when you, when you heard the music and you were drawn, mm. was there a, a drawing of the emptiness inside you as well? Oh, it, I can't even, exp I don't even know. I, I tell people, if someone were to stand behind me in that moment and take my photo, my feet would have been off the ground. Mm. <laughs> because as a drug addict, as a secret drug addict, I had never been higher in my entire life. Mm. I had no idea. And the crazy thing was, is like, I did nothing for it. <laughs> and went, what is this high that I've never felt before? Mm. It was higher than any drug mm. that I've ever done. Has your walk with Jesus been since that day, since that experience, has it been easy for you or do you still struggle or is it something that you have to wake up every day and say, like, I surrender this, God, I give this to yeah. you. What, what's life like for you now, four years later? I feel like, um, you know, they, it was funny when I got baptized November 10th, 2019, they need to like give people like a care package, like a warning package. That's like, uh, you just made a decision for heaven and eternal life, which is insanely amazing. However, there is going to be some opposition in your yeah, life yeah. like maybe you've never experienced before. Yeah. So all of a sudden, these hardships started coming at me, started getting thrown at me, and it really started with the group of friends that I had and people that I was surrounded with. It was like, I, I'm all of a sudden, I'm different yeah. now, yeah. and I don't want to participate in the things that I was doing before. Yeah. And so honestly, when I gave my life to Christ, it was the loneliest that I had ever been in a really, really, really long time. Really? Yeah, it was extremely lonely. I felt such peace, but I also felt, who do I even talk to and who do I turn to? Like right. I had the Davenport family. Okay. Which yeah, was right. amazing. They kind of yeah. ministered to me. 
Well, but how did you work through the loneliness then? I mean, if you felt lonely, what did you do it, to come on the other side of that? What choices did you feel like you had to make? The Bible, honestly, I just started opening the word and mm. literally not even really understanding much. I'm just like right. getting little bits and pieces and he's speaking to me here and there. Um, but that's really what I had to, I just, you know, dove in head first and was totally. like, well, I guess it's just me and you, God, yeah. and we're going to try to figure this out. Did you eventually get some community around you? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And you know, what's amazing about it though, is, um, that, that kind of weirdness and quietness, um, and loneliness lasted for about two weeks. Oh. All of a sudden the Lord just started, like, I just started meeting people, just started sending me people. All of a sudden mm -hmm. I look at my past, my best friend, Paul, who I built stone walls with landscape was a full believer, like loved the Lord and had secretly prayed for me <laughs> wow. my whole life. Wow. Like all of a sudden, wow. all these people started like just popping up. So and it was like, it, I just, my eyes weren't open to it. Yeah, well, yeah. it sounds like, so, I mean, you talked about, you know, the, the alcohol going away, the drugs going away, the language going away. Um, but it sounds like it's not just a loss of these things, yeah. but there was good things going mm -hmm. in. Yeah. yeah, he pulled one thing out and put two things in. And the, they're good things. Yeah, oh, amazing things. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, the, the, the friend group, that I, I'm so surrounded and so prayed for and so blessed and so like there's always something, there's always someone that comes and pops ex at the exact moment that yeah. I need it the most. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. this thing has been hard. Yes. This yeah, thing I'm, has been hard. I'm sure, how has your songwriting changed? I mean, obviously you're writing different, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Your lyrics are probably totally different. Yeah. Is your approach to even writing totally different now that you have come to Christ? Yeah, it starts with a prayer. It Done. starts with, hey, sure. God, what do you want to yeah, say? Forget that. about what yeah. I want to say. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and what do you want to say? And so we start every song right with a, with a prayer. But yeah, that, the first couple of nights I remember after I got baptized, I had woken up in the middle of the night and just started writing light and love and mm. Jesus <laughs> and, 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 and it just power and, and the gospel and just things like these words just kind of fell out of me. And I was like, what is going on? And, uh, it just really sparked this songwriting. I wrote 117 songs wow. in seven months. Wow. Your self-titled, uh, debut album is out yeah. this week. Yeah. Who I am is on the radio. Mm -hmm. There's a song that the radio is a little a little jittery about is yeah. your testimony. Yeah. I'd love for our audience to hear that. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, you want yeah. To play let's, let's do it, it You want me to play that song? I, yes. I want to hear it. Yes. You would allow that. Yeah. <laughs> Praise let's God. Do it. Yeah. What I found empty in a bottle, trying to fill the hole. Dug myself five feet deep and one more foot to go. I looked for peace inside a powder till it put me on the floor. I got so close to overdosing. I knocked on heaven's door. I knew I was searching for something, but I didn't know what. I spent so much time just trying to figure out exactly what it was. I didn't find my way back home all alone. I didn't change my mind overnight on my own. It wasn't my plan or my hands that would finally set me free. I didn't find God. No, I didn't find God. He found me. Don't know how I didn't see him coming Like headlights in the dark With the force of a thousand horses Headed straight towards my heart Never thought that I'd believe Till he was right in front of me He was right there all along And now I see I didn't find my way back home All alone I didn't change my mind overnight on my own it wasn't my plan or my hands that would finally set me free i didn't find god no i didn't find god he found me oh he found me yeah he found me in the lonely in the hopeless in the broken he found me 
at my lowest, not a notice, and I know that he found me in the lonely, in the hopeless, in the broken, he found me at my lowest, not a notice, and I know I didn't find my way back home all alone. I didn't change my mind overnight on my own. It wasn't my plan or my hands that would finally set me free. I didn't find God. No, I didn't find God. He found me. Oh, he found me. He found me in the lonely, in the hopeless, in the broken. He found me at my lowest, not a notice. And I know that he found me. Um, it, it just, it hits me so hard. Um, I'm so grateful for your life, Ben. I'm grateful that you showed up at church. I'm grateful that you surrendered. I grateful that God just, he found you right where you were at. You didn't have to fix anything. You didn't have to make it look all great and put a bow on it. You just showed up and that's where God met you. And there are so many people today, I have no doubt, Randy, that can totally relate to that, that just feel really lost and want to stop looking for God and just want to just give up and, and wonder wonder if there's more. Is there more? And yes, there is. I promise you this story, your testimony, Ben, it alone changes life, but then your music on top of that just accelerates and pushes us forward. I love you, my brother in Christ. <laughs> love you too. So grateful for your life and your testimony and your music. It's changing lives. It's touched my life today. And I pray that it's touched your life today too. Randy, I know it has you too. You so love music. You, we're sitting here, the power in his voice. Yeah, I know, it, I know. Right? It's, it blew it's, my hair back. back. Right? It's, it it's great. Hair. But you needed the power of God in your Ooh, life. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> you I don't know you, what to you say. choked up. I know. No, but what, I mean, what do you, how do you feel when you feel God's power? in your in your music it's uh it's not my own that's for sure um you know paul paul said um i'm still really learning the bible you know yeah. and uh, paul said it's a mystery of god and and he was talking about this thing that has apprehended me this love that has apprehended me and i feel like that it's like i want to explain it and I want to, I want to get my hands on it, and I want to write it down, and I want to sing it out, and I want to, you know, I want to wear it on a T-shirt. I want to, <laughs> I want to run around town and scream it at the top of my lungs. And it's like I, I just, it's so hard to explain. But the the Bible says if you just ask and believe with your whole heart, right, and and you just declare that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, like, I, that's all I've done. That's all I said. I said, Jesus, I believe you, and, and I believe that you died for me, and I believe that you're my Savior, and I love you, and will you please help me, because I just need help, yeah. you know? Yes. I just, it was just an, yeah. came from an honest place of, like, I've tried everything else. That's why that John 6, 6, 8 has become my life verse, that, Lord, to whom else shall we go? I've got nowhere else to go. I've ran, I've tried everything. <laughs> I, I've literally, I've tried yes. everything. And it yes. was like, and it was that Peter moment, right, uh, of looking up and being like, Lord, to whom else shall we go? Yes. I, I've got nobody. So there's, there's somebody watching right now mm. online, on television, and, and they, they're right there where you're at. And, yeah. and if, if that's you, yeah. I want you to call that telephone right yes. mm. number right there and just talk to somebody. Yes. They're just gonna pray with you, they're gonna love on you, they're gonna listen to you. Yeah. But we, if you need to surrender your life to Christ right now, don't waste another second. Ben can tell you. Yes. It's the answer, it's the, the thing you're looking for, it's the power you need, it's, it's the, the filling for that void. So Ben, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, the yes. opportunity, I just, but this is what God has done. I never would have envisioned even sitting here with you two. I know. Like never. I know. And in the name of Jesus, the, 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 that was a swear in my mouth my whole life, <laughs> and now all of a sudden has become my Lord and Savior. Like, it, it, it's, it's only God can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Changes everything. Only God. And all I had to do was ask Him, and it was free. Yes. Yeah. All the time that I've wasted, yeah. Yeah. all the stuff that I've been through, but to realize that it, that it was all for His good, that it was all for a purpose, that it was all so that I could talk to that person right now that's on the other end. Yeah. That's like, I'm ready to kill myself. Mm. I've been meeting them every day. 
I've seen the scars. I've seen the cut marks. Mm. Mm. I've heard the stories. They're everywhere. Yeah. And so that's what I'm out to do. So thank you for allowing me to just talk about it and be myself. And oh, be I love it. I, I, I love it. Is that song on the new album, by the way? That song is there, yeah. Okay, the song yeah. is there. So you, yeah. can, you can catch that on Ben's album. It's out now. But I love the thought that, that you found me because mm. there are so many people that feel like they're lost, that feel like wow. they're hopeless, that mm. need a rescue. Yes. And, and God is the God of the one more, yes. one more. I want you to see some who are needing to be found and some that we may, that we found, mm. but you can help. You mm. can help reach that one more. Watch this and you'll understand. The fact that children and young women are being kidnapped and held captive is intolerable. But what happens next to these innocent victims is unthinkable. I would scream and cry and say I didn't want to do that work. But the lady would beat me with a big stick. I still have the scars on my arm from her beatings. One girl that was in there with me had her throat slit. Another had her breast cut off. After seeing all that torture, I was terrified I would get murdered too. So I did the work they forced me to do. Anjali's story ended well because she was rescued from her captors and she has started the healing process. But there are thousands of other victims and children at risk who are not so fortunate. They are still waiting to be rescued. I pray that before more girls die in there, we can get them out so they can have hope and a new life like me. New hope in life like me. Man, there's something that rises up inside of me uh, that just wants to shout, like, do you see why this is so urgent that we get to them now? There was one that was reached, there was one that was rescued, and she was restored. Uh, one, but there is another one today, right now, someplace that we've got to reach, rescue and restore. We've got to start that process today. It is urgent. And I hope that you feel the same that I feel that rises up within me every 30 seconds. Is there something that we can do, Randy, to stop this? I believe that there is. If we all do our part, we all come together, we can make an impact. We, we, we know we can because yes. we, we are, you mm -hmm. are. So many of you have reached out and said, we want to help, we want to reach, we want to rescue, we want to restore. And I, I have to say this, Tammy, because right now we're seeing an awareness. We, we've been seeing this. It's not just around the world. Right. It's in our own country. It's right here. But unless we give them the hope of the gospel of Jesus right. Christ, we're we're not doing them the service we think we exactly. are. Exactly, yes. And so I, I am all for reaching in wherever mm. a, a, a young person, usually women, but sometimes some boys are, are in, she called it in the roll in work, it's hell, it's mm -hmm. hell on earth. Mm -hmm. Wherever that is taking place, I wanna rescue that person. And yeah. we've done it with your help, but we need to do more. I want to reach into places where the enemy is trying to steal lives and say no, and we've done that, but we need to do more. And I, most of all, I want to restore as many lives yes. as we can. We serve a God who redeems Amen. all things. Mm. We're asking you right now to reach out with some other partners who have said, hey, we've got a matching gift. We'll match every gift made today. That means the, the average cost is normally around $128 to reach, rescue, or store one. But with your gift, Today of $64, we can do that. If you can make the gift of 128, it'll actually help two lives. Many of you could reach out and reach, rescue, restore 20 with a gift of 1,280. But listen, it's not about the money. It's about the redemption. It's about Christ entering into someone's hell and giving them heaven. And he's asked us to partner with him. We're asking you to partner with us today, please. 
go to the phone, go online, make the best gift you can. And the best gift you can is the one God puts on your heart. We obey, the results are up to him. Let's obey today. Let's be his hands and feet around the world. Do it now. Innocent children and young people longing to be loved and cared for are being abducted and sold at the hands of violent predators, forced into the evil industry of human trafficking. Through Mission Rescue Life, you can reach out to warn children who are at risk for sex trafficking, rescue those already enslaved, and restore young lives and give them a future. With a generous $320,000 matching gift, now your gift of $128 to help reach, rescue, or restore one child can be doubled to help two children. Your $64 gift will be matched to help save one child from the horrors of human trafficking. And a $32 Mission Rescue gift will be doubled to $64. With your gift today, we'll send you Declare. This beautifully designed 31-day devotional reveals 31 names of God from Scripture and gives insight to the character, grace, and depth of God's love for you. With your gift of $128 or more, you'll receive the Gospels book set. This special edition collection of the four Gospels in the classic King James Version includes journaling space opposite each page of Scripture so you can reflect as you read, the perfect companion for your daily time with God. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,280, which will now help save 20 children, and you may request our inspiring bronze sculpture, Consider the Birds. Please call, write, or make your gift online. You really can help reach, rescue, or restore a child. I hope you'll do the best you can today. And if you want prayer, mm. do use that prayer line. It's always available 24-7. Tammy, I was just... God, so blessed by that. I totally, totally thank you so much. My goodness, my brother in Christ, <laughs> I love you, I'm so yes. thankful for you guys, I love you too, yes. thank you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Life Today. Bye-bye. Let you give your life to your father. The one who helped you see. Won't leave you recklessly. Here's the text, dad, comma, I promise you it's not the meds, comma, angels just invaded my room. Tomorrow. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.